We moved to North Wales uh, 20 years ago and for the first 10 years we were on the eastern side of the Cludian range of hills and for the second 10 years, since 2010, we've been on the western side. Um, the, the Cludian range is a really striking part of this, uh, this, this part of the countryside and uh, although I don't normally do landscape I decided I'd like to make a print of the Cluidian Hills. They're a long, thin stretch of hills and your paper never seems to be quite wide enough to contain them. Um, but I've been out, I've been making drawings, quick sketches, taking photographs. I've worked up my drawings in a slightly more detailed form and a slightly abstracted version um, in the studio. And I've been thinking about what sort of materials I'm going to use uh, to, um, to make my printing plate. So I'll probably use carborundum to make the dark areas. I'm going to use texture paste and card. Card is good for the, for the sharp lines in the drawing. Um, I'm going to use some natural materials as well. So I'm going to use quite, quite a variety. And this, this, is my, this is going to be my printing plate. I've got a piece of mount board ready cut to size, a long, thin piece of mount board. Um, my first step is to transfer. I've drawn, I've, I've traced, um, I've traced the drawing onto, uh, onto tracing paper and I'm going to transfer that onto my mount board and uh, take it from there. I don't normally worry about reversing an image so that the I, I just accept that the print is going to come out the other way around but because the Cluedian Hills are uh, an actual place I think I will reverse my plate so that my print will come out the right way or at least the same way as, as you would see the hills. So I've got my drawing transferred onto my mount board and uh, the next step is to start applying materials to it. But before I do that, I'm just going to cut along the horizon line to separate the sky from the, from the rest of the plate, because uh, I want to treat that slightly differently. Right, so I've cut along the horizon line and I've got, so I've got my plate in two sections now. And what I'm thinking is that I will roll ink onto this top piece, onto the sky section and fit the two parts back together again when it comes to printing. So now I'm tracing onto a piece of thin card and uh, I'm going to cut this out and stick it onto the, uh, the backing mount board and That way I can bring out the sharp lines, the definite lines within the drawing. Right, now I can cut that out. I want these sections to be quite dark, so I'm just going to treat those with carborundum. I'm not going to cut out, um, I'm not going to cut those sections out of the, out of the white card here. Um, I'd like those, those white card pieces to stand forward a little bit of, of the dark areas. So just to say with work, I'm not, I'm not going to cut those bits out. So, um, I'm going to place, as I cut the pieces out, I'm going to place them onto um, my backing plate. Mm.
trying to cut out as accurately as I can. Because obviously these cut lines will... Uh, this is what's going to bring out the drawing. So I've removed the dark areas of the hills that I'm going to treat with carborundum and the sky from this thin piece of card and what I need to do now is to cut along all the lines that I've got on the card and treat it like a jigsaw, separate them all out. When I put the pieces back together on the backing card, on the, the collagraph plate, what I need to do is to remove a little piece of card from the separated sections. So, for instance, this piece here. Uh, in order to make that stand up, stand out on my print, um, if I put that there, that's going to go in that position. What I want to do is to create a little bit of a gap in that area there, which will hold in just a tiny gap. Um, so I'm going to just remove a tiny bit of card here. I don't want it to hold, I don't want this um, to hold too much ink, otherwise that's going to give me problems when I'm printing. Just a little bit like that should be enough. And I'm not going to remove these sections at the bottom. Because I'm going to add card on to those sections. So I'm going to cut along this line. down here. Um, and we can cut along this line. To this point. Oops. Uh, and just take another sliver off here. So these pieces will go back down like this. When I glue this down, I'll leave a tiny bit of a gap here. Just enough to hold the ink and likewise here. treat the some or some of these lines anyway with marron grass so uh, uh, let's see I'll cut along here
change my mind. I'm going to cut along these lines. Oops. Right, so that piece will go there. Right, so I need to cut along here. Sometimes I do this with a knife and sometimes with scissors. It can be easier with scissors. So that's going there. I also need to cut along the bottom. Do that with scissors. Right, that should be okay. Pop that in there. Can also just spread it out a little bit. There's the rooks. As I stick these down, I'll probably need to do a bit more trimming and um, adjusting. Right, that is all one piece, so I've just got to cut lines into that. I've cut out all the pieces of thin card that I want to use and now I just need to stick them down. I've got one last piece to stick down. Um, it's really important that everything is, is really well glued to the, uh, to the plate. Um, anything that's not glued will, will lift up when you come to print. Um, I use Gorilla Glue these days because this is a really strong glue. Um, I find that works really well.
There we go. Um, I'm just I'm thinking about treating these little strips at the bottom here differently. I might try and apply carborundum to those before I glue them down. There we go. Okay, that was somewhat fiddly. And it's a little bit uneven, but I don't mind that. I think that'll be fine. So I've dried the plates with the hairdryer and I want to apply carborundum to the top of the hills and so I'm going to brush glue on uh, to those sections and apply the carborundum. I'm going to have to be quite careful not to get glue in places where I don't want the carborundum. So I'm using a slightly smaller brush. I might have to do this piece by piece, otherwise I think the glue will dry out. So.
about done. Um, I think the next thing is to dry that off and and then I think about the creating some, some more texture in, in these areas using a bit of texture paste and um, perhaps cutting into the card a little bit just so a bit, a bit of variety there. At the moment this white card is going to give me a flat even tone, uh, quite pale and I want to add more texture to parts of the hills. Um, I want to use something that's not going to be quite as dark as the carborundum. So I'm going to try this texture paste. I'm also going to cut into the plate using a knife. That will do. Better wash these brushes out before this stuff sticks in them. I'm just adding to this texture by cutting into the plate with a knife. I've, re I've reversed my drawing here so that I can see more easily where I want the lines. I think these lines might help to describe the shape of the hills. to that. With this lower section of the collar graph plate I'm going to use some natural materials. I've got some bracken here which has been pressed and flattened and I'm going to stick parts of that onto a piece of thin card and then stick that onto the collar graph plate.
these pieces to the right are getting slightly smaller. Um, that, that fits in quite well with a sense of um, increasing distance to the right hand side. This stuff isn't very easy to stick. Never mind, we'll persevere. It's very dry actually, so it's quite brittle. So here's the last piece going on. It's not very easy stuff to stick down. Um, a lot of the natural materials are quite tricky to get to stick. Um, it's, it's easier working with fabrics and card and thread. On the other hand, the uh, results are very different too. Um, God, I'm covered in glue. <laughs> Oops. So when this is properly dry, I'll trim all the bits off the edges and stick it onto the, uh, the backing plate. Uh, I'll just use the hairdryer now to make sure, oops, <laughs> to make sure the glue is dry and to um, make sure every, every little bit of bracken is stuck down onto the plate. That's all the bracken stuck down onto this strip of card, which forms the bottom of the collagraph plate. I need to make sure all the pieces are really well glued and dry um, so that nothing lifts off when I'm applying the ink. Then I'll trim the excess pieces off the edge and stick it onto the back of the plate. Before I stick this section with bracken onto the plate, I'm going to work a little bit more on the top half and I'm going to use some marron grass. So I'm just applying the last piece of marron grass to this area. It's got its own natural curve. There, just a few little pieces of marron grass applied to the middle of the plate. The thing I need to do next is add a little bit of tissue over the top to hold it all in place.
So I press the tissue in as close as I can to the marron grass so we don't lose any of the shape. Um, last job then before I varnish the plate is to stick down the bracken. You can see I've got some parts of the collage sticking out beyond the plate itself, so I'm just going to trim those off. Okay, I'm ready to varnish the plate. Uh, I'm not going to apply white emulsion to this plate as I, as I sometimes do uh, to collagraph plates because um, half of the plate's white anyway. The Brecon probably won't take the emulsion very well and I want to, I don't want to fill in the carborundum too much with layers of emulsion and varnish because I want that to be quite dark. So the, the purpose of using emulsion on occasion is to make the plate white so that it's easier to see how much ink you've got on the plate um, when you're inking and wiping. So I've applied one coat of varnish to the plate, dried that off and now I'm just applying a second coat. The varnish makes the plate quite tough. Um, it also means when it comes to printing I'm going to be printing the textures of the plate rather than how absorbent the material is. I'm looking forward to seeing how it comes out. Uh, what I expect is that the carborundum will be dark because that's going to hold a lot of ink and I should get quite a good impression from the bracken. The lines in the card will stand out quite clearly. Um, so, let's see how it goes. I'm trying to keep the varnish quite thin, brushing it out well. And also thinking about the direction of the brush strokes, particularly, say, in these areas of the hills. I don't want to fill in the textures of the plate too much. Varnish does give a nice overall texture to the plate. So even in the flat areas here, the brush marks of the varnish will show, will provide a bit of texture. I tend to do two coats of varnish because it's quite easy to miss a particular area with just one coat. But I do keep the varnish very thin. I like the acrylic varnish because that dries very quickly.
there i think that's done so i'll get that dry and then we're ready to print